a very warm welcome to our University Future Festival session on lifelong data literacy training from universities to companies. We are really happy that you joined in. Us, that is Brent Dykes. Brent, maybe you could introduce. Yeah, I can introduce. I can introduce myself. Uh, my name is Brent Dykes. I'm uh, chief uh, data storyteller of Analytics Hero, and I'm also the author of uh, this book here, Effective Data Storytelling. And I'm excited to be here to present with Petra. That's it. And me, my name is Petra Breidenbach. I'm a professor for statistics and empirical research methods and market research at University of Applied Management in Germany. And um, within the next 30 minutes, we will talk about data literacy for future employability and digital citizenship. We will talk about data storytelling as a critical skill set. Then we will introduce you to two approaches, the teaching and the training approach for students and professionals. And we will explain how these two approaches can be blended and interconnected. And we will give a vision for a seamless lifelong learning journey for individual career path. This leaves us about approximately five minutes for your questions and comments before we close the session. For academics and professionals across faculties, subjects, and industries. Uh, Petra? Yeah? Uh, you're not sharing your slide. I mean, are you, you're not in presentation mode with your slides. Well, okay. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, for academics and professionals across faculties. We're not, we're not seeing your, I don't know, is every, I'm not seeing the slides. Students see the slides. No. No. Do not see the slides. No slides. Yeah. Okay. So what can I do? Because uh, <laughs> I I am yeah. I'm in presentation mode. Um, you have to use the screen share functions. But it's it in the menu bar on the left yeah. side of your screen. Can you see the function? Well, screen share? We, just, we just practiced. No. Right it's there. Now, now you need to go to it. now you need to go to screen present presentation mode. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wait a minute. Um, No. Yes. yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So I will start again. Um, for academics and professionals across faculties, subjects, and industries, it is very important to realize that data literacy is an essential future skill for future employability and digital citizenship. Data literacy re refers to the ability to read understand, interpret, and communicate data effectively. It, upon, it encompasses skills such as collecting, analyzing, and visualizing data, as well as critically evaluating the data sources and making data-driven decisions. Data literacy empowers individuals to navigate the increasingly data-driven world and leverage data to solve problems, make informed decisions, and drive innovation. Data literacy is an essential future skill because in our world, trillions of data points are created daily. Therefore, working with data is essential for employability and digital citizenship. However, Students, researchers, and professionals often fail to share their data analysis in an effective manner. 
that inspires better decision making. Graphics, graphics are often used for visualization that do not convey the intended message. So <laughs> universities and companies have the unique responsibility and opportunity to build these skills in tomorrow's workforce. This demands a vision for, for how universities and companies can instill data literacy skills, such as data storytelling in more people, preparing them for the data and AI challenges ahead by a lifelong training journey. Within data literacy, data storytelling is one essential competence. As Brent will point out right now, data storytelling enables individuals and organizations to effectively communicate, engage, contextualize, persuade, and act upon data-driven insights. Brent, please go. Yeah, uh, definitely data storytelling is a critical skill. Uh, when we spend so much time working on data, at the end of that journey, we need to then communicate our insights to other people. So there's a lot of different versions or different kind of perceptions of what data storytelling is. And my definition is here. So what is data storytelling? So data storytelling is a structured approach for communicating data insights using narrative elements and explanatory visuals. And there are three core elements to data stories. So they are data, narrative, and visuals. If I, if I talk to you and ask you what you would think of data storytelling, what would be the three core elements, you'd probably think that these are. Now, the interesting thing is the intersection of these bubbles or these circles, we start to see the power of data storytelling. So the first intersection I want to focus on is the intersection of narrative and data. So if I were to give somebody a spreadsheet of information of data that I'd uh, analyzed, uh, there's a good chance that they could look at it, that information and come away with different understandings of, of that, different conclusions or different uh, perspectives on the data. They may not come away with the particular insight that I want them to, to understand. And so what I need to do is I need to combine narrative with data to help explain the numbers to that audience and help them understand what those numbers mean, uh, make sure that they're concrete in their mind, that they come away with the right interpretation, that they come away with the right conclusions. So the narrative and data are really important for explaining the information. The next intersection is really between visuals and data. So again, if I had a spreadsheet of numbers, it was a table of data, it may be very hard for you to see anomalies in the data, patterns, trends. And so what do I do? I, I visualize that information so that the audience can then see different uh, aspects of the data that they wouldn't see if it was just in tabular format, right? So I can enlighten the audience, help them to see things in the data in the numbers that they would otherwise miss. And then the last intersection is between narrative and visuals. And this is really because we as human beings, we love, it's almost part of our DNA. We love stories, especially visual stories, right? And you may have been up watching your favorite uh, show on your, on your streaming service. And that's because that storytelling with visuals is very engaging for us as human beings. Now, if we, when we combine all three of these elements, if we have the right data combined with the right narrative and the right visuals, then, then we have something that's very powerful, that it can change the way people view the world, can change the way uh, the actions that people take. It, it is very powerful. So if we go to the next slide, so here we can see that there's really three effects of data storytelling. One, it makes your content more memorable. Uh, the human brain is always trying to make sense of the, the information that's being presented. And when we package it as a story, it's going to stick with people much more. It, it's basically a package of information that is much more easy for the human brain to process and store and remember. Uh, it also can be the emotional components of storytelling as we infuse those into our storytelling can make the content more engaging and also uh, more persuasive. With a story, we can, we can definitely uh, persuade people to take action. And that's really what we want to do when we have an important insight to share. 
Now, I'll give you one little um, example here of uh, from storytelling and how do we take our data findings and turn them into a data story. Now, when I was first researching uh, uh, for my book, I found that there are many narrative models out there. Many of them are based on uh, the work of Aristotle. So Aristotle, when he was studying Greek tragedies, he found that they all had a, a certain arc to them. And some people have called it stories, they say stories have a beginning, middle and end. Uh, but for me, that wasn't really sufficient. And then I, I came across Gustav Freytag, who's a German playwright, who in the 1800s, he studied Shakespearean plays. He looked at Greek tragedies and he found that they all had an arc to them. And I've taken his Freytag pyramid and I've converted it into a model which we can use for data storytelling. So if I walk you through the different areas here, just like a normal story, we start with a setting. We need to introduce the time period. We need to in introduce the, the scenes, the, the location, the characters. Uh, we need to establish what's normal. And we do the same thing with a data story. We, we want to introduce the status quo. We want to introduce the normal expectations, what we expect to, to learn. Uh, and then we have a hook. And the hook is really where we see something in the data that's unusual, something maybe a metric goes up or a metric goes down. This will capture the attention of the audience if we've targeted something that they care about. And so they're gonna to wanna to hear the rest of the story. Then we go into the rising points. It's kind of like an onion where we're peeling the layers of the problem back and really exposing what it what is this opportunity or what is this problem. Uh, through our analysis, we, you know, we're obviously explaining, picking, choosing things that would really illuminate what's going on to the audience. And then we get to our aha moment, which is our main takeaway, our main finding that we have, uh, the impact that this problem or opportunity could have to the business. Uh, and that's what really, if we want the audience to remember one thing, it would be our aha moment. Now we're not done at this point because we then want the audience to do something. We want to drive some kind of decision or action. And so we've also provide uh, options on what they should consider and a recommendation. Now through this process, the audience is learning more about customers. They're learning more about the business. Um, so there's a, a knowledge transfer that's going on. And then there's also, they're also put in a position to act. They have everything they need to make a decision and move forward. And so this is the, this is the power of a data story. And this is the structure that we use, or at least that I introduced in my book to inspire people to, to take their data findings and turn them into stories. Okay, so we now have in mind that working with data is essential for future employability and digital citizenship. So universities and companies have the unique responsibility and opportunity to build these skills in tomorrow's workforce. Let's have a look at how students and professionals can be taught and trained in these skills today. Let's start with how to teach students first. From my perspective, there are already many subjects in a curriculum existing where these two important topics can be fitted in. For example, they can be taught in statistics or research methods, market research, research lectures or similar, where students already read, work and communicate with data. I believe that data literacy and data storytelling can easily be taught across subjects and faculties, subject specific method and the examples will of course have to be considered. But the basic theory is core for almost all subjects. From my experience, a blended learning approach of on-site and online lectures as we do it at University of Applied Management is perfectly suited to reach out to class you can do this by having online sessions, for example, for teaching theory, discussing simple examples, do simple group work, or show recorded external impulses, or, or you can do this by classroom sessions, and these are more appropriate for more complex discussions, peer-to-peer -peer learning, exercising together, or integrate live external impulses. Beyond that, I believe that for this blended learning 
course setting, various additional learning formats are helpful for students to increase understanding and learn applying the, the skill of data literacy, data storytelling in a modern environment. This covers, for example, learning videos for autodidactic repetition or deepening of knowledge, expert talks to get to know current real world problems and understand the pr practical benefits. Uh, you could integrate breakout sessions or workshops to exercise in groups or do tutoring sessions to enforce peer to peer learning. Or you could also integrate projects to apply knowledge. The latter means, for example, that my students have to run through a fully fledged market research project on their own. Moreover, I integrated a new format in my courses called Business Impulses, uh, where data experts join in for a brief online or classroom session, passing on their practical experience to the students. These Business impulses are very helpful because they make partly dry theory alive. This was the approach for students. And now okay, let's ha have a look at how uh, looks the perspective of professionals, Brent. Yeah, so if we look at today with data storytelling or sorry, data literacy in general, there are a number of uh, risks that that companies feel like they face with their with their workforce lacking certain skills, and so we can see here in this list. If we click one more time, at the top of it is the inaccurate decision making and slow um, slow decision making. So the inability to really take advantage of all this rich data that companies have and actually use it in their decision making is a problem. And obviously, there's other other challenges that are introduced when people don't have certain data skills. In this one here, we can see that descriptive analytic skills are the top area that, that leaders are looking to grow. Uh, so you can see data-driven decision-making, we're interpreting data visualizations and dashboards, uh, the data analysis and manipulation, uh, you know, creating data visualizations and dashboards, uh, business uh, intelligence tools, and there's uh, data storytelling. Data storytelling kind of overlaps with all of these because obviously with our data stories, we're trying to inform and help people make better dis data decisions. Uh, there's also obviously the, as we share data stories, people need to interpret the charts and information that we're sharing. So it, it really is an important skill that, that a lot of companies are trying to de develop in their organizations today. How are, how, what are the learning formats that, that are being used for training professionals? And, and so obviously you have your traditional uh, instructor-led training. That's, that's obviously something that we've been doing for many, many years now. You have your e-learning courses. So that's obviously very popular now. And then I, I think an, an emerging thing is the, the simulation training. Uh, you know, I have a, a friend who actually works for a company that does VR training and and they have uh you know for skills uh they do a lot of uh training through vr work and different things like that but even even in data work we could have simulated data sets and different things where we can we can challenge uh people's javascript or um sql skills or python skills against certain data sets and, and then obviously there's the mentoring and coaching aspects that are a key component now i would say in terms of where a lot of companies are focusing is real on the blended learning. They're mixing the, the instructor-led training with the e-learning courses. And then there are some new trends in terms of micro-learning, where you're getting smaller kind of bite-sized content, maybe three to four, four or five minutes. People can jump in and, and maybe they have a question about how do I do this or how do I do that? And they can get that short kind of immediate kind of training on certain things. You also have adaptive learning. So as AI gets infused into the blended learning, you're gonna have uh, people that maybe are at different levels in terms of maybe, you know, at a previous company they learned or, or, or they've just been longer in their career. And so they don't need to go through all of the same steps that maybe somebody who's brand new out of college coming into a, a, the same program. And so the, 
the tool can actually learn and see and, and kind of personalize the experience uh, and adapt to their, their needs and their skill set. And then obviously gamification, that's something that we're seeing more of. So that's where you've got your, your um, you know, badges and point systems and leaderboards and kind of a reward-based uh, approach to learning that, that obviously resonates with uh, uh, Gen Z and, 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 and millennials. Now, one of the things we want to look at is just micro learning, because obviously there's been a lot of focus on micro learning and, and how does that compare to traditional courses? So if we look at a traditional course, you're going to see comprehensive coverage, right? You're getting very deep learnings into, into, into a specific topic. There's a structured learning path that you take through that content. Uh, it's going to be an interactive environment and you're going to, you probably get a formal certi certification at the end of the course that you can then put on your resume. So that's a pro, those are the pros of traditional courses. In terms of the cons uh, with a traditional course it can be very time consuming, right? It, it, there may be many hours of instruction that you need to go through, uh, testing quizzes and different things that you need to go through to, to complete that course. There's much less flexibility. It, you can't jump around in the course. Typically you have to kind of follow lockstep uh, what those courses and, and, and take those modules in a certain uh, process and they're, and they're obviously less customized or, or personalized to the individual. So, uh, you know, again, different individuals may, may have different needs or different skills or existing experience uh, and they have to go through the same kind of lockstep uh, as, as everybody else, regardless of what their experience level or interest level is in different parts of the content. Now, if we look at micro learning, uh, the pros are it gives you high flexibility and it's very focused content. It's almost like they're independent of each other. Uh, you can go and learn something very quickly. Uh, it, it higher leads to higher engagement. And, you know, with the younger workforce, uh, this micro learning uh, it really seems to resonate with them. Uh, and so it, there's a lot of pros there with in terms of the engagement that you're gonna see with a micro learning approach. And then in terms of cons, obviously there's limited depth. And so you're not getting the same richness of content that you would get uh, into a particular topic. It's very brief, it's very shallow. Uh, you get kind of a fragmented understanding, right? So if, you, if people are hopping around into different uh, uh, modules within the micro learning, they may skip over certain things that are important for them to really understand at a robust level and, and sometimes the content is maybe a little bit oversimplified in terms of the depth. Um, and so you, you really only have people who have a very shallow understanding of the topics. Okay. Now let's recall again the start of our session and what we have heard so far. Universities and companies have the unique responsibility and opportunity to build these skills. However, today, they run that fairly independently from each other, despite knowing that lifelong learning is inevitable. This demands an idea for how universities and companies can instill, renew and update data literacy skills more seamlessly. So future-oriented society needs a vision for how universities and companies instill data literacy skills in more people by a lifelong training journey. And this could, for example, look like this. Across faculties, universities need to create awareness of importance, teach it over full length of the curriculum and undermine the necessity for continuous training later in life. During that period, universities must already connect students to continuously trustworthy later shop relevant training offers such as relevant thought leaders for example authors or lecturers by specific content via books white papers podcasts or micro learning posts or by channels and tools but how can this be realized in practice. Um, the first option is with the help of AI. 
generally speaking, students need to learn using AI, for example, for identifying the existing missing competences or training objectives, for summarizing the latest advancements, for de developing individual learning recommendations, for checking training success and adapting training process. This means that AI can assist learning platforms in order to keep up with quickly outdated knowledge. The second idea is to make use of the still growing popularity of social media apps. One has to enable individuals to early to plan and travel on their learning journey with the help of social tools and their algorithms by making use of edutainment formats provided by trustworthy thought leaders via LinkedIn, for example, or YouTube, and making use of the increasing trend among students being always available and present on social media channels. Edutainment means the combination of education and entertainment, referring to media content or activities that are designed to educate and entertain simultaneously. The goal of edutainment is to make learning enjoyable and engaging by integrating educational content into entertainment formats. We know this, for example, from the kids with the TV show Sesame Street, um, but this is, of course, also available for students. And there we have, for example, card games the wax card is one example, or comic videos, comic books, or also YouTube videos. Universities need to inspire and enable students to make use of entertainment by starting to use social tools to find trustworthy and relevant training offers, uh, by training the algorithms to bring in the relevant content in their own news feeds by consciously viewing, interacting, commenting, and hashtagging, and by harvesting the result of well-trained algorithms and taking over this habit in job and expand it according to requirements. This means for universities that it is very important to position themselves as a lifelong training source and stay in the relevant set and in the game for larger, more traditional education offers. This was the, the vision for universities, but how does a vision for a seamless lifelong learning journey for companies look like, Brent? Yeah, yeah. So if we look at it here, obviously there's a responsibility that companies have is to instill a sense of urgency that it's important to learn data and that it's an important part of their organization. Uh, they're going to step up and provide the the know-how and the encouragement for employees to do this and obviously providing the time, money, and tools and platforms to really enable this. So if we go into the, the three ways that companies are going to do this, obviously you want to establish a learning culture, right? So you want to have training programs. Most big companies today have training programs. So this is not uh, an issue, but maybe emphasizing the the learning, emphasizing the experimentation, the co the curiosity, and that could be, you know, maybe looking outside of the the uh, platforms and looking at hackathons or looking at data challenges or or having sandboxes, data sandboxes where people can can practice different skill sets and and learn through that. Uh, the other thing that you're going to see here is uh, you're going to see you want to establish like personalized learning paths, right? So you want to tailor this to each individual. You want to uh, connect them with mentors and coaches. Uh, you want to provide them with flexible learning options, you know, with the different tools that I talked about, maybe doing a combination of micro learning.